Good day, everyone. Before our discussion starts, let me ask you a few questions. Do you ever have your favorite hero such as because of his achievements that you want to achieve as well? Have you ever pondered how was their life was behind the told stories to us? And have you ever pondered if they, if those heroes ever have a quarrel despite having the same aim of attaining freedom? And last is, have you ever tried to criticize a certain stories? Your answers to these questions are related to our topic for today as we unravel the Andres Bonifacio, the untold stories of his execution. Andres Bonifacio was the father of Philippine Revolution and is among the national heroes of the Philippines. However, debates regarding his death are is still a prevalent issue in the Philippine history as he is billing as he is being celebrated during his birthday unlike other national heroes. We are the Group 10 researchers from BS in Accountancy 1 at the San Sebastian College Recoletos de Cavite and we will be tackling this today because we are not present during those times and manipulating information is easy. Thus, without further ado, may we call... Miss Misa. <laughs> okay, isa pa. <laughs> Kahit yung mismong part na doon sa huli na lang kayo mag-start. Ay, ako. Gusto ko perfect yung <laughs> <laughs> Sige lang. Eto na. Ayusin ko na. Huwag na kayong takot ka nang tumawa dyan. Good day, everyone. Before our discussion starts, let me ask you a few questions. Do you ever have your favorite hero, such as due to his greatness and achievements that you want to achieve as well? Have you ever pondered how was their life was behind the told stories to us? But have you ever wondered if our national heroes ever got a quarrel despite having the same aim of attaining freedom? And last is, have you ever tried to criticize a certain stories? Your answers to these questions are related to our current topic, Andres Bonifacio, The Untold Stories of His Execution. Andres Bonifacio is considered as the national hero of the Philippines, who is the father of Philippine Revolution. However, the, his debates regarding his death is still a prevalent issue in the Philippine history as he is being celebrated during his birthday unlike other national heroes. This topic is re timely relevant today because we are not present during those times, during his execution, and manipulating information is easy using the various available technologies. We are the Group 10 researchers under the program of BS in Accountancy 1 at the San Sebastian College Recoletas de Cavite. And at the end of our presentation, you will be able to know the life and the works of Andres Bonifacio to explain the untold stories of his execution through different testimonies. And last is to boost the critical and analytical thinking skills as we learn distinct testimonies about his execution. Thus, without further ado, may we call Miss Misa to discuss the life and the works of Andres Bonifacio. Thank you, Miss Karagay. So before we proceed in discussing the untold stories of Andres Bonifacio's execution, let me first give you a brief look back to his early life and education. So who is Andres Bonifacio E. De Castro, most often known as Andres Bonifacio? Andres Bonifacio, also known as the father of the Philippine Revolution, was born on November 30, 1863 in Tondo, Manila, and the eldest of the six children of Catalina de Castro, a Spanish mestiza, and Santiago Bonifacio, an alcalde of Tondo. Bonifacio grew up in a financially unstable family and as a child, Bonifacio had to help his parents by selling coconut oil and hawking goods. He was also skilled in crafts and visual arts, and he created games and paper funds that he and his other siblings sold. He even made posters for business firms, so at a very young age, Bonifacio already showed a spirit of hard work and determination. This also turned out to be their family's thriving source of income that continued even when he worked for private and government agencies, which will be discussed in the next slide. 
Moreover, in the 1870s, when both his parents died, he was compelled to leave school and started working at the age of 14 to support his five younger siblings. That is Espiridiona, Procopio, Troajo, Maxima, and Siriaco, with Andres as the eldest. Now, in his late teenage years, he worked as a mandatory or agent for the British trading firm Fleming and Company, where he got promoted and became a corridor or broker of tar, rattan, and other goods. So, on top of speaking Tagalog and Spanish, Bonifacio was also well versed in English, which he learned while being an employee at Fleming and Company. Soon, he transferred to German trading firm Frazel and Company where he worked as a bodeguero or storehouse keeper in charge of the warehouse inventory. And as stated earlier, while working for private agencies, their source of income since he was a child continued. He also continued to work several jobs, jobs that he has been doing since he was a kid, such as making and peddling paper fans and wooden canes. He managed to accomplish and do all of those at a very young age to meet their family's daily needs. And because they struggled to make ends meet, he did not finish school but enriched his natural intelligence with self-education and taught himself various subjects including history, philosophy, and literature. Bonifacio was actually a voracious reader and he studied by reading books about the French Revolution, contemporary Philippine penal and civil codes, biographies of presidents of the United States, novels like Victor's Victor Hugo's Les Miserables, Eugene Sue's Led with Errant, and Jose Rizal's No Limitang Here and El Filibusterismo. So his hard situation didn't stop him from wanting to learn by reading and studying during his free time, showing us that being responsible and mature doesn't come with age because it is a matter of making right decision when faced with a difficult situation. Furthermore, he was influenced by the works of Jose Rizal, a noted Philippine nation nationalist, and he deeply admired Rizal's advocacy for Philippine independence. While studying in private, Bonifacio gained knowledge in the process and becoming aware of Spanish oppression. So in 1892, Bonifacio was among the proponents of Jose Rizal's La Liga Filipina, a society that raised concerns and political reforms in Spain's colonial government in the Philippines. He was actually one of its mem first members, so he went from learning through Rizal's works to being part of a civic organization which Rizal established. However, La Liga got disbanded after Rizal's arrest. Bonifacio, Apolinario Mabini, and others revived the organization in Rizal's absence, and Bonifacio started establishing local chapters within Manila. He became the chief propagandist of the revived Liga, which contributed moral and financial support to the propaganda movement of the Filipinos against Spain. So at a very young age, he became active politically with a vision of freeing his nation from Spanish colonization. Furthermore, Bonifacio was married twice, initially to, to someone named Monica of Palomar, of Palomar Tondo, who seemed to be his neighbor. She died of lepros leprosy and had no children with him. So this happened before he joined the results La Liga. And in the year he joined, in 1892, 29-year-old Bonifacio met 18-year-old Gregoria de Jesus through his friend and her cousin, Theodoro Plata. Gregoria's parents disapproved first of their relationship since Andres was a Freemason, a person considered enemies of the Catholic Church back then. However, they gave in as soon as the couple get married through a Catholic ceremony and Binondo, Binondo Church in March 1893. Andres and Gregoria also got married through Katipunan Rites in a, friend, in a friend's house in Santa Cruz, Manila, on the same day of the church wedding. However, a tragic incident came to their life. In early 1896, they had a son who later died of smallpox. 
Now may we call Miss Nicolas to discuss Bonifacio's life during the Philippine Revolution. Thank you, Miss Nisa. So now let's talk about the beginning of the revolution, which is led by no other than the father of revolution himself, Andres Bonifacio. So after the Spanish arrested Rizal in July 1892, Bonifacio decided that the Philippines would only achieve independence through revolution, and so he founded the Katipunan. The revolution began on August 23, 1986, when the Katipunan launched an attack on Spanish forces in Manila. The revolution quickly spread out to the country, with Bonifacio leading many of the battles against the Spanish forces. So back then, Bonifacio and his people were so eager to stop the colonization and bravely decided to launch an attack against Spanish forces in Manila. However, Bonifacio's leadership was challenged by Emilio Aguinaldo, another revolutionary leader who had different ideas about the revolution. So this is when Emilio Aguinaldo entered the scene. He joined the Katipunan back in 1895 and became its leader in Cavite province. One initi initiated Aguinaldo become known as Magdalo, Magdalo, named after Mary Magdalene. In 1896, the armed struggle began in Manila and quickly spread throughout the country. Aguinaldo defeated the Spanish forces in several battles with the help of the United States and declared June 12, 1898, as the independence of the Philippines, and he rose to become the leader of the Katipunan. So, by initi initiating the, the to conduct the revolution in a different way from Bonifacio, Aguinaldo was successful in defeating Spain in many battles. However, although Bonifacio showed an upgradeness, patriotism, and his heroism for our nation to be free from Spanish colonization. Aguinaldo had Bonifacio arrested and executed in 1897. But despite Bonifacio's death, his legacy as the revolutionary leader and a champion of the Philippine independence continued to inspire future generation of Filipinos. He is widely regarded as one of the key figures in the movement for the Philippines independence. And his contribution to struggle for self-determination and commemorated annually on the Natasha Day, a national holiday in the Philippines that is celebrated every 30th of November. Now at this point, let me discuss briefly Bonifacio's death. So... Andres Bonifacio was executed on May 10, 1897, on Aguinaldo's bloody hand. The official history of the Republic of the Philippines records that Aguinaldo indeed ordered Bonifacio's execution. We commemorate Bonifacio's day, Bonifacio Day on the day he was born instead of the day he was executed because he was executed under the hands of our fellow Filipinos. That is why it is more acceptable to commemorate his day on the day he was born. So, compared to, uh, to our other national heroes, the commemoration of his day became confidential as it is celebrated on the day he was born rather than, rather than on the day he was death for a regretful reason that is it is fellow Filipino who executed him so let me call on Miss Abad thank you Miss Nicolas the founding of Katipun so after the league got disbanded Bonifacio along with other revolutionists founded the Katipunan in July 7, 1892 the Katipunan also known as the Kataas Kaas ang Kagalang Galangang Katipunan ng mga anak ng bayan was founded when Filipino writer and nationalist Jose Rizal was sentenced to banish to the Pita. 
So in the same event, Filipinos interested in the overthrow of Spanish rule founded an organization following Masonic rights and principles to organize armed resistance and terrorist assassinations within a context of total secrecy. It also operated as an alternative Filipino government, complete with the president and cabinet. The Katipunan was founded by Filipino patriots Diodato Arellano, Andres Bonifacio, Valentin Diaz, Ladislao Diwa, Jose Dizot, and Teodoro Plata. Initially, Katipunan was a secret organization until its discovered in 1896 that led to the outbreak of Philippine Revolution. Being a secret organization, its members are subjected to utmost secrecy and are expected to abide with the rules established by the society. Moreover, aspirant applicants were given standard initiation rights to become members of the society. At first, Katipunan was only open for male Filipinos. Not later than women were accepted in the society. So the Katipunan also has, it, has its own publication entitled Ang Kalayaan, or The Liberty, that had its first and last print on March 1896. Revolutionary ideas and works flourish within the society and Philippine literature were expanded by its some prominent members. In planning the revolution, Bonifacio contact Rizal for its full pledge support for the Katipunan exchange or promising results liberty from detainment by wrestling ring. However, a betrayal occurred. On May 1896, a delegation was sent to the Emperor of Japan to solicit funds and military arms. Katipunan's existence was revealed to the Spanish authorities. After a member named Teodoro Patino confessed Katipunan's illegal activities to his sister, the mother, fortress of Mandaluyong Orphanage. Seven days after the wrong turn of history, on August 26, 1896, Bonifacio and his men tore their sadunas during the infamous cry of Balintawa. That started Philippine Revolution, founding of the Katipunan. Captured Katipunan members, also known as Katipuneros, who were also members of La Liga, revealed to the Spanish colonial authorities that there was difference of opinion among members of La Liga. One group insisted on the Liga's principle of a peaceful reformation while the other opposed armed revolution. Next, may we call this global to discuss another theory. Thank you, Ms. Abay. Now, let's move on to the execution of the founder and leader of the Katipunan, Andres Bonifacio, which remains one of the most controversial and debated events in Philippine history. While history books tell of his death at the hand of fellow revolutionaries, there are other untold stories and theories that question the official account of his institution. In this discussion, we will look at some of the untold stories of the Bonifacio institution based on credible sources, particularly primary sources and secondary sources. One of the most widely held theories regarding the execution of Andres Bonifacio is that it was a political assassination ordered by General Emilio Aguinaldo, who was the revolutionary of the Philippines at that time. The theory suggests that Aguinaldo saw Bonifacio as a threat to his leadership and ordered his ex execution to eliminate the competition. The evidence supporting this theory comes from the account of Colonel Jose C. Reyes, a member of Aguinaldo's army, who wrote in his memoirs that Aguinaldo had ordered the execution of Bonifacio and his brother Procopio on May 10, 1897 that he was present at the execution and that he saw the bodies of the Bonifacio brothers being thrown into a mass grave. 
Another source that supports this theory is the account of Mariano Noriel, a revolutionary who fought alongside Bonifacio. In his diary, Noriel wrote that he had heard rumors of Aguinaldo's plan to eliminate Bonifacio, and that he had warned Bonifacio about the danger. Noriel announced that there was indeed a plot to kill Bonifacio and that it was not an isolated event. This theory is also supported by several pieces of evidence including the letter written by Aguinaldo to his brother, Candido, in which he expressed his intention to execute Bonifacio. The letter says, If Bonifacio is captured, he should be tried by court-martial and executed immediately. Another evidence was the letter written by one of Aguinaldo's officers, Major Lazaro Macapagal which describes how Aguinaldo gave the order to execute Bonifacio. Makapagal wrote, When we arrive at the spot, General Aguinaldo said, This is the spot where the Bonifacios will be executed. The order is that they should die. The order was carried out. This topic will be continued by Ms. Eragay. Thank you, Ms. Globa. To further add evidences for this theory, we will recall the happening during the Tejeros Convention, whereas the first political election had occurred for the elect for the presidential position. It was evidenced by the letter of Gregorio del Pilar in 1896 and later published in a book, Katipunan and the Revolution, Memoirs of a General of Santiago Alvarez. It was revealed that Bonifacio was removed from his position as a supremo of the Katipunan. Subsequent, subsequently, in the memoirs of the revolution of Gregoria de Jesus, it was contested that Bonifacio was frustrated due to the progressive faction in favor of Aguinaldo, who wanted a more moderate and diplomatic approach towards the Spanish colonization. And in the news of the GMA 2018, in the letter of Bonifacio to Emilio Jacinto, it was stated that the March 22, 1897 election was influenced by the allies of Emilio Aguinaldo. And later on, Bonifacio did not receive any letter from Emilio Jacinto and was then found guilty of treason and killed at the Mount, Bound, at the Mount Buntis in Maragondon, Cavite. However, in the, confession, in the confession letter of Emilio Aguinaldo, it was stated that it was the court who ordered to shot Bonifacio and Procopio instead of throwing them far away as per the order of Emilio Aguinaldo. The photo of this letter was from the grandniece of the widow of Bonifacio, Gregorio de Jesus, Lisa G. Nakpil. Now, to discuss the theory two, may we call Miss Globa. Thank you, Miss Karagay. A second theory that challenges the official account of Bonifacio's execution is that he was not actually killed, but was able to escape and live out the rest of his life in seclusion. This theory is based on the account of Dr. Jose P. Santos, who claimed to have met Bonifacio in 1918, more than 20 years after his supposed execution. Santos wrote in his diary that he had been taken to a remote area in the mountains of Rizal, where he met an old man who introduced himself as Andres Bonifacio. According to Santos, the man's physical appearance and mannerism much those of the revolutionary leader. The man claimed to have survived the execution and had been living in seclusion ever since. While this theory is intriguing, it is important to note that there is no con there is no concrete evidence to support it. It is also worth noting that other historians have disputed Santos' account arguing that it is nothing more than a fabrication. 
A third theory regarding Bonifacio's execution is that it was carried out by a rival revolutionary faction rather than by members of Aguinaldo's army. This theory is based on the account of Epifanio de los Santos, a historian who wrote in his book, The Rise and Fall of the Atipuna, that Bonifacio was executed by a group of revolutionaries loyal to General Pio del Pilar. De los Santos claimed that Del Pilar saw Bonifacio as a threat to his own leadership and ordered his execution. This theory is, is supported by the fact that Del Pilar was present at the site of the execution and that he later claimed responsibility for it. It is worth noting, however, that this theory has been contested by other historians who argue that there is no evidence to support the claim that Del Pilar was responsible for Bonifacio's execution. Another claim to support this theory is based on the historian Reynaldo Ileto, who said that Bonifacio's execution may have been the result of power a struggle, a struggle within the Katipunan, with some members seeking to remove Bonifacio from power. A related theory is that Bonifacio's execution was the result of a conspiracy between the Philippine government and the Spanish colonial authorities. According to historian Jim Richardson, there is evidence to suggest that the Spanish authorities may have played a role in Bonifacio's execution either by providing intelligence to the Philippine government or by actively working to remove Bonifacio from power. This theory is supported by documents uncovered in the Spanish National Archives, which suggests that Spanish authorities were, monitor were monitoring the activities of the Philippine Revolution and may have been involved in the decision to execute Bonifacio. This topic will be continued by Ms. Aragay. Thank you, Ms. Globa. To further discuss another theory, we will be discussing the theory for fellow revolutionaries of Bonifacio conspired to eradicate him. This theory for was co-evidenced by the testimony of Lazaro Macapagal, which revealed that the rival of Bonifacio, General Mariano Nariel, arrested Bonifacio and was later brought to the armed forces of Aguinaldo. The letter written by Lazaro Macapagal to the, was initially handed by the scholar Jose P. Santos 30 years after he and his men shot Bonifacio and Procopio. It was revealed that Bonifacio was persuading his rivals, rival generals to turn their back on Aguinaldo as he had plans on Spaniards to eliminate the Spaniards. Little did he know these rival, these rival generals, particularly General Mariano Nariel, betrayed him in exchange for a higher ranking instead. Macapagal was instructed by Nariel to read aloud the letter when they reached the, book, the bundok ng tala. It was stated that when you get there, open the envelope and read it aloud in front of the two and follow the directions of the letter closely of the letter closely. The two siblings then did not have a proper grave but were buried using the bayonets. The fifth theory contested that Americans played a role in the execution of Andres Bonifacio. It was because Americans, because the Philippine Revolution, the outcome of the Philippine Revolution, captivated the interest of the Americans. Likewise, Bonifa the, likewise, the Americans saw Bonifacio as a threat for their colonial ambitions to the Philippines. It was evidenced by the book of Sonia M. Zayde, The Philippines, a Unique Nation, whereas American soldiers intervened in the trial of Bonifacio and have him released with his brother. Another evidence is the question of heroes by Nick Joaquin, 
whereas they see Aguinaldo, whereas they are, whereas they were in, whereas they were in more in favor with Aguinaldo, rather than Bonifacio, who is anti-American and radical. Another theory is another evidence is that the ABS-CBN news channel, the Philippine Revolution, the untold story, which also revealed that Aguinaldo, which further testified that Aguinaldo's leadership was more favorable by the Americans. However, the evidence, these evidences were not independently verified and requires a analysis as the context of these evidences are nuanced. Another theory that is linked to the evidence of ABS-CBN News Channel, The Philippine Revolution, The Untold Story, was the theory six internal conflict within the revolutionary. It was supported by the letter of Spanish Governor Camilo Polavieja to Aguinaldo, urging Aguinaldo to eliminate Bonifacio. It was because the Spaniards saw the internal conflict within the revolutionary as an advantage to strengthen their colonization to the Philippines. Nevertheless, this theory was also disputed because of the because it because it was lack of evidence and needs further analysis to support this. Now may we call Mr. Morabe to discuss the theory seven and theory eight. Thank you, Ms. Caragay. The next theory is theory number seven. Emilio Genalo did not want to kill Andres Bonifacio, but the military tribunal did. According to facsimile of Aguinaldo's confession in the Revolt of the Masses made by Teodoro Agoncillo, Aguinaldo wrote that ang mga kasulatang inathala at iningatan ni G. Jose P. Santos ay siyang nagbibigay ng tiyak na matuwid sa naging pasya ng hukumang digmang lumitis at humatol na barilin ang magkapatid na Bonifacio. And when... Aguinaldo receives the document from the military tribunal. He did not want to throw dirt at the unity of our people and the rebellion against the Spaniards. He also wrote in the letter that, At sapagkat makapangyarihan ako noon, ay pinasya kong baguhin ang gayong hatol at halinan ko na lamang na ipatap sa malayong pook ang magkapatid na Andres at Procopio Bonifacio sa halip na Barilin. After the news of Aguinaldo's decision, the two members of Consejo de Guerra, General Mariano Noriel and General Pio del Pilar, tried to talk Aguinaldo about his decision. And they quote, Kung ibig ninyong pagpatuloy ang kapanataga ng ating kamalaan sa paghihimagsik at kung ibig ninyong mabuhay pa tayo ay bawiin po ninyo ang inyong indulto sa magkapatid na iyan. After hearing the two, Aguinaldo took back his words and let General Noriel implement the Consejo de Guerra's order of execution of the Bonifacio brothers. Theory 8. The Distortion This theory states that General Noriel gives misinformation so that the execution of Andres Bonifacio and his brother will proceed. According to Chapter 16, the summing up, page 302-305, in Revolt of the Masses made by Teodoro Agoncillo, that the Bonifacio brothers were found guilty and to be executed by the military tribunal, but later ordered by General Aguinaldo to be banished in solitary mountain instead, can also be called the pardon. After the pardon was delivered, the two brothers were already killed. General Pio del Pilar and General Noriel excuse states that General Aguinaldo order granting pardon to the Bonifacio brothers did not once reach General Noriel's headquarters in Marugondon because the General Aguinaldo was then in the field between Mount Buntis and Marugondon and was gathering his men in order to reinforce the revolutionary army fighting the Spaniards who were then attacking the town of Marugondon. Continuing, 
General Del Pilar says, General Noriel also told me the same, namely that the Supremo Bonifacio and his brother Procopio were already dead when he reached the Order of Pardon. The reason why the order did not reach him on time was that there was a battle ranging and it could not be ascertained where the General Noriel and his companions were. The pardon did not reach the brothers on time. However, the documents and testimonies shows that the pardon was received by the defense counsel and the prisoners on the same day it was written, and the excuse given by the General Noriel was plain distortion of facts. It's obvious that the Spaniards had not yet invaded the town when the prisoners were sent to the mountains and still ordered Mayor Macapagal to execute the prisoners. Giving the final instruction by General Noriel, hurry up, the Spaniards will attack today. In the death of Bonifacio, in revolt of the masses made by Teodoro Agoncillo, Andres Bonifacio died after his brother Procopio was shot. He tries to flee to the woods after realizing he cannot persuade his executioner to change his mind. While being pursued by Mayor Macapagal and his soldiers, Andres was unable to run away faster due to his injuries and was shot numerous gunshots and collapsed to the ground besides a large stream of creek. With the soldier's bayonet, they buried Andres Bonifacio in a shallow hole while Mayor Macapagal placed a few twigs on top of it. To synthesize this discussion, Miss Globa, are you in? Yes, thank you, Mr. Morabe. In conclusion, the execution of Andres Bonifacio remains a controversial and debated event in Philippine history. All these theories showed how they fear Bonifacio, the father of Philippine Revolution, founder of Katipunan. Among them, the account that states that he was executed by fellow revolutionaries is the most widely known and debated. It is truly really fascinating how different perspectives and interpretation of history can emerge from the same event. While we may never know the truth of what really happened, the untold stories of Bonifacio's execution continue to shed light on the complexities of Philippine history and the struggle for independence. Now that you have heard about these theories, we encourage you to reflect on your own understanding of Bonifacio as a hero. Does this change your perspective? Which theory do you find most convincing? As we continue to learn and delve deeper into our history, may we always strive to understand and appreciate the complexities and nuances of our past. That's the end of our discussion. Again, we are the group and presenters, and thank you for listening. And this is our presentation. Thank you.